Yeah? Okay. Go ahead, put them in the bucket. Oh. So today we're out picking up the last walnut. This is a walnut tree. I haven't taken a lot off of these in the last couple of weeks. But yeah, we're out here just picking up all the walnuts that have fallen. And uh, just taking them in the bucket, putting them in the bucket so we can harvest them later. Come on, baby, this way. I'm gonna show everybody, but we gotta put more in there. Come on, look at all these walnuts, come here. So these are black walnuts. And they really fall in abundance. I don't recommend that you pick up the brown ones with your hands because the brown ones have a, I don't know, it's, it's used for a dye. So there's some green ones still left. And I'll show you what it looks like when you cut it open. Lady's choice, you know what I'm saying? So, how I was doing it, at home, was I was cutting a line down the middle, and then in there you could see the walnut, and then you could just pop this out with your hand, and there you go, you got a walnut. So, we're going to throw those in the bucket, and we're going to see how many you can If you look at the floor over here, it's littered with them. Like all those balls over there are all walnuts. Yeah, There's still it. a few Come in the trees. Come up. And I just picked these fresh off the tree. So these are good to go. So. Mm. Wow! Yeah. What cool! So if you look here, so these are black walnuts. Wow, these are native so to the wow. East Coast, and they're traditionally a lot harder than the regular English walnuts you guys find in the store, and they have a totally different flavor. Um, I haven't had any like fully ripened to mature yet, meaning I didn't give them enough time to fully cure yet. Uh, the ones I do have uh, will should be ready before Thanksgiving uh, to use on my mom's like banana nut breads and stuff. So these harvests actually go towards her stuff that she has going for the holidays. So we're going to fill up this bucket and I'll see you guys back at home when we're ready to turn this into uh, actual walnuts and no husk and no fruit on the outside. So I'll see you guys when we get there. Come here. So it's the next day, so what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to save money by doing this and the things that you're going to need to do it in small batches. This is my first time doing it aside from, you know, all the other practice runs I've done, but for this season, this is the first time I've done it, and uh, so I'll show you guys what the setup looks like here um, by my feet, so. So here are the things that I found most useful. So I picked up a five gallon Home Depot bucket. We got this paint mixer stir thing for like, I don't know, 10 bucks, 13 bucks or something. This actually attaches to your drill. You're actually gonna need a really good uh, high torque uh, drill for this. I actually use my Ryobi one. Uh, those floaters in there, that's from the debris that we got from our walnuts yesterday. Uh, there's a bag that I used last time, uh, just like a regular garbage bag, just to help keep the splash down. Uh, this stuff will stain anything it touches, so just be very careful of that, even your skin. So the other two products on the floor next to the bucket 
are these natural home veggie bags and these wire mesh baskets. Uh, they're metal, but I got them both from Dollar Tree for $1.25 and these come in handy later in the video. So now that you got your bucket with water, I actually ended up transferring these walnuts into a home goods bag because it holds more and that five gallon bucket was full yesterday for no reason at all um i mean obviously the walnuts took up all the space but you see how much more space i have left in this home goods bag and i've actually processed like two or three of these bags already so what we're going to do is we're just going to start dumping them in. Um, if I had two hands, I could show you guys what it looks like faster, but yeah, you get the point. Alright, so I got it pretty much filled to the top with these walnuts, and these have the old dried up ones and everything. That's okay, it doesn't really matter. Now, the next step you're going to want to do is you're going to want to take your garbage bag and place it over the top of this. So here's my garbage bag. It's all dirty. You don't really care. It doesn't, it doesn't really matter for this. So drape it over the over the bucket. It's got this huge hole on top. I'm leaving the um, I'm leaving the hose running just so I can rinse my hands. But yeah, you can see this bag has been through a lot. I mean, if you want, you could you know you can move the bag around. And, uh, I'll get this right here. And the purpose of this is to keep the splash down. And you want to kind of keep kind of keep it loose and tight at the same time, if that makes any sense. I know that's kind of vague, but you know, you don't want it too tight in any direction, and you don't want it too loose on top because then the bag gets snagged against the hex bit of this. I'm just going to rinse off my hands real quick. I did mention this does stain. This will stain your hands, your clothes. So I highly recommend you wear dark colored clothes or clothes you don't care about. And these baskets, we will move these out of the way for now. So let's get mixing. Make sure the chuck is tight. Move this hose out the way. It's gonna get messy real quick. Double check your chuck. Now remember, if these are going in full like this and we want to take all that husk off of it so that's what we're doing in this process. that's what we're doing in this process and again you want to keep the bag from getting pulled in Like that. 
I mean, I would recommend like a heavier drop cloth or something. That might help. And I like having it at an angle and being able to move it, so. I mean, this is still a lot faster and a lot less messier than any other methods I've seen on YouTube. I actually learned the paint mix, paint mixer method from the Outdoor Boys YouTube channel. Luke over there is who I learned this from, so. Move that bag over just a wee bit. See, I got a little splash back on me. Not a big deal. Just shake it off. And uh, you can actually add more walnuts to this batch if you want. Because all of that is a slurry. See that? That's all a slurry. So what we can do is go ahead and make the most of this. Some more. And you can actually see there's just a plain walnut right there on top. Found this on the forest floor. So we'll cover it and then we'll probably do another smaller batch because this is kind of getting full. This is my first year processing black walnuts. Um, we don't really eat them uh, like that, but the the health benefits that you get from them, you look them up online. Like you could make a you can make like an antifungal tincture from the husk. Uh, you have to make it a certain way, but. Um, the, the walnuts, they stay good inside the shells for years as long as they're dried out properly. So. And the bag is starting to get wrapped up. Oh, I was just spinning on reverse on that side. That's probably why it wasn't doing much. So yeah, like I said, you could figure out like a, a better, like a better method of what works for you as far as like a cover. But yeah, but look, the walnuts come out pretty much clean, and I'll show you guys how to get those even cleaner. So we'll check out the plastic bag. And it's okay that this bucket isn't food safe because we're not going to be eating the actual walnut from the shell. Like we're going to obviously wash them. But look, it actually turned it into a slurry. And uh, yeah, it's time for us to wash this all out now. I'll show you how we're going to do that. What I like to do because my patio actually has holes down at the bottom. I just pour it all out. And then let the uh, let the holes go to go to compost. If that makes sense. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rinse off the drill chuck, which is right over here. And. The walnuts are going to be too big to fit underneath my patio uh, railing, so I'm not too worried about that. Uh, but if you don't have 
the same exact setup, which most of you won't. You could use a milk crate because any decent sized walnuts won't fit through a milk crate. And uh, the walnut shells are too hard to be broken open by this paint mixer, so you don't have to worry about that as well. And any other walnuts that have not been thoroughly cleaned of the husk or the fruit off the outside, you can just run it through the system again. So now that that's clean, let's put that to the side. I like to keep a good flow going. Like a good jet stream going. And uh, that way you can rinse off your porch and clean your walnuts as well. So let me uh, get this bucket kind of clean because less contamination is better for me. that still need processing. Right, just put them to the side. These are probably the ones that we added later. Not that big of a deal. Baskets come in. Said, I'll show you how I'll clean these up even more and see how this one's still got some nastiness on it. So the next step after you take all the husks off your walnuts, you want to fill the bucket with water, not only to further clean them, but also you want to remove any floating.
normal in every batch that you have a few floaters. So what you want to do is just get in there, turn your hand, and any ones that clearly float are presumed to be bad because they probably have air pockets in them instead of actual nut meat. So we're going to skim these off the top. And throw those to the compost. And any ones that clearly float. Throw those to the compost. Now, it's completely normal that you have a few extras. Or a few, not extras, but floaters. Alright, and that looks to be about it. Now I'm going to show you my next process. You don't really have to do it, but in order to get you know, a lot of this leftover black stuff and crust off of the shells to help uniform drying. Uh, I've invented an apparatus to help clean these better and get all that gunk off of them. So it's, it's an abrasive step. So I'll show you guys what that looks like here. I'm going to dump out this water, keep all the nuts in uh, in the bucket, and then I'll show you what it looks like. Alright, so this is going to look a little crazy, but this is an old printer. I actually have a 12 volt battery in here, right there. Um, with a potentiometer which is basically like the volume control on your car radio so i actually have a potentiometer right there uh, focus yep so this is a potentiometer so with one turn of the dial it will power up this old printer that i got for five bucks at a thrift shop i gutted everything else out of it I got a plastic paint can that I kind of messed up, so I put Gorilla Tape over it. Not a big deal. We'll just, like, not even pay attention to that. So what I did was I drilled holes, and I actually took some aluminum pieces of angle, like aluminum angle, and I drilled the holes through the angle first after I you know obviously I cut the angle to size and then I drilled holes through the angle and then I put the angle on the inside of the barrel and then I took a right angle drill bit attachment with a drill and put the holes through the bucket or through the barrel and then I siliconed everything and then put it all together with these big washers on the back. And I actually cut grooves into this. And then also what I do is I'll take some steel industrial Brillo, throw that in there. And then we're going to fill this up with, not really fill it with water, but we're going to fill it with walnuts first. And like I like I had mentioned, the point of this is to get all that black stuff off so that the walnuts become clean. So I'm gonna fill it about halfway with walnuts and then fill it just above the walnuts with water. So I'm gonna do that now. Right, I would say that's about halfway right there. Gonna fill it with water or just above the walnuts with water. Alright, so I filled it just above the walnuts with water. The reason why I siliconed it 
so that it doesn't leak. And then we're going to take this and we're going to put it on tight and make sure we got a solid seal. Alright, so now that the lid is closed, I put the smooth side on this side. I try to uh, create a spring loaded like roller to prevent it from like grinding up against here. And then, because for some reason it, it always comes back this way, I'm not sure why, but. And then I'll leave this running for like 10 to 15 minutes or if I'm like practicing. Uh, not practicing, but if I'm doing another batch of walnuts, I'll just let this run forever because the the abrasive textures on the outside of the walnut plus the the agitators, which are the angle iron, uh, the angle aluminum, and the Brillo should really make these walnuts come clean. So the purpose of these baskets is so that I put the walnuts in here to dry. Thankfully, I always have an air purifier going in my house. But what you could do is lay them on a sheet pan or something and um, let them dry out before you put them in the white bags, which are the which are the produce bags. They're they're a lot bigger than this. I'll show you guys what I have. Um, processed already in walnuts that are curing. So these are not from the vid earlier in the video. These are ones that have batches that I've done on previous days. Plus, I've given out bags of them uh, to people that I know. So, just not including the harvest from yesterday. That you guys saw earlier in the video uh, and not including what I gave out to my mom um, I had 12 pounds of walnuts in these bags and I did take some out the other day to give them to some people that I knew uh, but 12 pounds of walnuts and how much would that cost you at the you know your grocery store these are you know organic you know, fresh harvested uh, wild black walnuts. And these are a lot harder to break than your, than your, uh, than the ones at the supermarket. So uh, the ones at the supermarket, most of the time you'll find are English walnuts. These are a lot harder to break. So I'm still coming up with a way to uh, break these into nice uh, pieces to be able to harvest all that, you know, all that nut meat out of it. But yeah, I mean, look at that. You know, just for, you know, less than $20 worth of, of tools, not including if you don't already have, you know, a drill. But if you do, or even if you don't, you could borrow one from someone, um, you know. But I've already harvested over 12 pounds of, you know, black walnuts and um you know these will stay good for a while inside of the shell so these are perfect during like an emergency situation or something like that so i would implore you guys to go outside and check your like your local neighborhoods and your parks and stuff to see if you have you know if you have them and if you do grab some totes and uh you know if you get, need any help with processing these or you know anything like that just come back to this video and just rewatch it uh you could actually process them in a bigger bucket but that's all i have space for which is the five gallon bucket so you guys could do it in bigger you know drums or whatever and i would probably suggest like a heavy 
uh, see-through like drop cloth like a painter's cloth or something like that you guys could try that but look how big these produce bags are these are freaking huge i don't recommend that you fill them all the way to the top because you still want airflow to get through to them and from the date that you harvest them google says you should that they're fully cured in four to six weeks um i guess gives the the nut meat a chance to shrink up and come away from the walls on the inside of the walnut um, I know that my bag with the black, yeah, with the black string, I wrote that these are going to be ready by, um, you know, by the second week or so of November, or at least by Thanksgiving of 2023. So, um, and this is the bag that I gave the most walnuts out of, you can tell. So I wanted the walnuts to be, you know, somewhat ready to eat by the time I gave them to the people that I gave them to. So, um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will post an update as soon as I get a cracker apparatus done so that you guys can watch how it works and see what it takes to make it work. So, um, but yeah, the, the, the printer, you know, that's a perfect method. I bought the potentiometer off of eBay for a couple bucks that paint can bucket thing um i got that from home depot for about 10 bucks all of the hardware i mean all in all you'll probably be less than 50 bucks invested into all of that and there is a a device that you guys can grab online i'll put that up on screen right now so that you guys can see it but it's a it looks like a big huge whisk and you can run the walnuts over and it's an easier way to pick them up off the ground um and these are perfect especially if you're doing them in you know especially if you're doing them in small batches so to let them air dry before you put them in these bags to cure and then you could just hang these up from like your cabinets or in your pantry or something store in a cool dry place so again i appreciate you guys watching make sure you guys smash that like button leave a comment down below subscribe hit that notification bell and i'll see you guys on the next video this is a deleted scene. So I'm gonna show you guys what it looks like when you crack open one of these walnuts. Um, actually just pulled this off the bag. But yeah, like I said, these walnuts are super hard to crack. Um, I do have my nutcracker right here. And uh, these are extremely, extremely hard. Like you can't even do it. I can't. So. What I did was I just take one of my hammers. And I would suggest that you do this on something really hard. So let me do it on the floor really quick. All right. So, but this is all fresh, organic walnuts so you you can see the chambers where the walnut meat was growing and these have a very different distinct fragrance and flavor um and from what i've heard it's about five to ten percent nut meat per shell so i mean after you crack them open you know, you're gonna have some some digging and picking through, but the goal is to create something that will separate, not really separate, but crack these open enough that you don't have to hammer each one by hand. So, um, let me see what these taste like. I'm gonna grab a couple pieces of nut meat right here. Make sure I haven't got any shells because I made that mistake the other day. And I bit into a shell and I screamed like heck. So, uh, but these are perfect for like toppings and um, for desserts and stuff. And then also what I'm going to try to do is see if I can grind these down to make them into something. I don't know. Like, uh, I don't even want to put the energy out there, but uh, not, not really put the energy out there, but 
say what I'm going to do with it, but grind down the shells into like a powder or something and then figure out what to do with it. This doesn't really smell that much, but these, these smell very, very sweet. Like sweet and almost a little pungent. Yeah, like sweet and like floral. Mm. And they definitely have a way different taste than regular walnuts. Very delicious though. So I would say keep these in a cool dry place and you guys will have a snack year after year. Um, because... I'm finding these closer and closer to my house so I can just go out whenever I want and go get these. So I encourage you guys to go get these. They're free. All you gotta do is just spend the money to harvest them. Alright, I'll see you guys on the next video. Thanks for watching.